How's it, how's it? Can you believe it's been four years? Four years of making videos about photography on YouTube. And I've got to the point now where I'm asking like, why? Why am I making these videos in the first place? So to answer this question, I'm gonna talk to two people. One is my accountant, another one is Obi Olbehauta and his new book, Going Dutch. Uh, you know, Obi is a fantastic photographer and huge thank you to both him and his publisher for sending me this book. And I'll get back to Obi in a second, but I wanted to give you a bit of background about how I actually came to start making videos on YouTube. So some of you may know that I used to run a family photography studio, and then when COVID came along, I had to close it down. And this was somewhat fortuitous, because I'd been on the fence a little while about taking pictures, because I had a new family. My son at the time was two years old, and I wanted to spend time with him rather than other people's kids. So I thought, you know what? I really should get off my backside and start making videos about photography because this is all I know how to do. I only know about photography. I don't have another career to, to segue into or anything like that. It is photography or it is nothing. So YouTube seemed to be a handy way of still being involved with photography, but also having time for my own family. So yeah, kind of win-win. Now in the beginning, I made a mistake that I think a lot of creators make, which is thinking that the AdSense revenue, so that's the money that creators get from the ads that are increasingly being all over YouTube and Netflix and, 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 and well, I don't need to sort of hammer home this point, would be like, that's how you made your income. And funnily enough, to begin with, it was actually the case. I did pretty well, right? Better some months than, than being in the studio. I thought, well, this is, this is great. But obviously hiding there in the corner was a little golem, a gremlin, whatever you want to call it, that was going to kind of try and sabotage all of this. Now, a big complaint that a lot of people have uh, when they're sort of seeking out photography on YouTube is that it's all about gear reviews, your technical bits and bobs, sharpness, you know, the kind of thing, like five million ways to use Lightroom that you didn't know about. And the argument is often that they do these because people watch them. And that's actually true. Right? These videos are so prolific because a lot of people do watch them. If I make a video about Obi Olbehauser or a video about Desiree Dolren or somebody like that, most people would just walk on by. And Scott was talking about, you know, Scott from Tin House Studio. He mentioned this as well the other day. He was saying that he has similar issues with his channel that to make the content that he wants to make is difficult because nobody looks for it on YouTube. People don't search for what they don't know. And that was highlighted when I was working in the family portrait arena, which has a large proportion of people who have come to photography from another career. So like IT, something like that. And that's fine, you know, that's what they want to do. But you, I would talk to them and I would say, hey, do you know what? It's like, do you know who you should check out? You should go check out, uh, like V-Spears with her, like, you know, kid photographs, quite arty and stuff like that. And they'd look at you and go, oh, okay. Now I can appreciate that. You know, V-Spears, fairly niche photographer, you know, more in the artistic sort of side of the world. But then I'd sort of have more conversation and mention people like Eve Arnold or, you know, sometimes even people like Richard Avedon. And, and these photographers would be like, no, never heard of them. And I was just, I was like, how? How? <laughs> so I, I kind of made it my mission. I thought, if I don't talk about this stuff on YouTube, then it will, I, I will be doing photography and photographers a, a bit of a disservice because I'm not passing on my passion for photography. And that passion came from the seeds that were planted as a student by my lecturers. People like, you know, Harry and Voldemar and Bertie and Flip. And, and those seeds were watered by Obi Olbehauter. Again, look how much traction he's getting today, right? When I listened to him talk about his career as a photographer, he was down at the Drakensberg one year and he got up and he was just like, he was animated and excited about photography. I thought, 
damn it, man, this guy's kind of cool. He, he really lit a fire under my backside. And that's what I wanted to talk about with photography on YouTube. That passion, that excitement. But there's, and as you can probably guarantee you see, there is a but coming in and it's financial but. That's that gremlin that's hiding in there. It, it's not sustainable. Now, over the last four years, something that has been clear to me is that one, the videos that I really, really enjoy making, where I talk about photography, I talk about you know, the things that motivate me and the, and the ideas that just kind of you know, just want to get us excited are difficult to package. They're difficult to get eyeballs on because they're not as easy to quantify, say like a, a, a video about how to make your pictures sharp. And that, that is a problem because I don't want to make videos about how to make your pictures sharp. I don't want to share that. Yeah, other people are doing that. And they're doing it much better than I can. I, I want to share this, this excitement for photography that I, got, that I got from people like Obi. But if I make a video saying, hey, go check out Obi Oberhalter. He's pretty cool. People don't watch it. Right? And the problem is when people don't watch these things, then over time this compounds and YouTube just kind of stops promoting your videos. There was a certain point where there were, but there were a lot less channels uh, around on the YouTube space, photography-wise, and the, the content I was making was, was being promoted. It was great. And I thought, this is great, because now I can, I, can, I can keep making the content that, that the core viewers, everybody like loves when we talk about photography. I thought, this is it, I've cracked it. And do you know what happened when I started doing that? When I just made videos about the things that really motivate me in photography, that I think you can get. Right? The views just go, right? So what are we going to do? How do we keep making these videos that really, I think, you know, are, are, are about this shared passion for photography and still make it viable from a, from a financial point of view? So I don't want to make videos that are, you know, driven by the algorithm and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it just, it feels hollow. It feels hollow to me when I'm making it, it doesn't feel authentic. But there is a solution. And the solution is that I, I have a space off of YouTube. So it's a TPE community where we come together and we talk about photography. We have that, that ethos, that, that, that idea that, that I had at photo school where there's the conversations that go on, right? And, and there's that I can make content there that doesn't have to pander to a, a, an, an audience, an algorithmic you know, thing to, to, to share with people. I can put up you know, some tutorials where we talk deeper about you know, how to photograph color as a subject, how to think about composition in different ways. And plus there's all these people talking. And if you come over to there and you join me there, then that helps support the channel. It helps keep the channel's mission focused on you know creating content that doesn't have to worry about getting views to make it viable one of the things that i loved growing up i grew up in the uk and we have the bbc so the bbc is government funded so it has no commercial intent whatsoever so what happens is programs get made that would never get made and i grew up in an era that was rich with content that was produced for the sake of education, of benefit to the nation. Things like Tony Hart and his gallery. You know, he would come and he would talk about you know, art and things like that. And, and just without any expectation of having to make it viable, it wasn't flashbang, what have you, it, it was just there. And throughout you know, my, my time watching TV and stuff like that, I have I've seen the massive difference there is in Content is created for the sake of sharing that passion, of not having to worry about the commercial intent of the content. And that's where I have this real, this thing inside, because I desperately want to make videos about Obi, about all the photography ideas and stuff that, that we all love, but without having to worry about whether or not it is going to get 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. Because let me tell you, 
some videos that I've made, they might make 20 pounds. And I want to keep sharing this stuff with you. I want to, I'm really inspired because when I see people leave comments, people like Eva Arnold's son, you know, he, I think it was his or her son, he left a comment the other day saying, what a wonderful video that you did about, you know, about Eve. When people come and they say, I love what you've done. Thank you for introducing me to this photographer. Thank you for inspiring me to pick up my camera again. Thank you for all of these things. I think that, that's why I make these videos. But I need your help to keep making them. And you know, if, join me on the community. Join the other guys. You know, and it's not just you getting all that kind of you know, that camaraderie and the discussions and, and you know, the, the classes and, and the interaction and stuff, but you're also helping to keep videos like this, well, not like this one, but you know what I mean, the content that helps inspire people, that makes them leap up and leave a comment saying, I love your videos, but I can never finish them because I'm inspired halfway through <laughs> to go pick up a camera and get shooting. That's what we're here for. That's what I wanted when I first sat down is to bring that passion for photography that I was so lucky to have instilled in me about the, the ability to learn artistic things from community programming, if you want to call it that. And I want to share it with you. And I just thought, you know, I wanted to let you know what's going on. And, you know, and if you can help support the channel, if you can help bring more of this content to, to a wider audience, anything you can do, I would desperately, desperately love it. It would be fantastic. And, you know, I've waffled on about Obi Olberhauta quite a lot in this video, right? Not only have I got a bunch of interviews with Obi and other photographers on the community, but there is a video about him over here. Thank you ever so much for watching. I really appreciate your support now and in the future and in the past. And, um, you know, here's to hopefully another four years, not quite the anniversary, but close enough, right, of the TPE. Thanks ever so much for watching and uh, cheerio.